whole Lissitza, uh, you know, uh, episode has been a black mark, I think, on the Ukrainian broadcast media. Because, as a number of people have pointed out, if you had taken the word Ukrainian out of there and substituted black or Jewish or whatever, like the media would have been up in arms why the TSO didn't do it any, any further. I mean, just think of it. If some star, some performer uh, in, on the social media said that all blacks or all Jews were subhuman, that they were dog shit, that, you know, whatever, like the, the media would be up in arms as to, you know, to, to ban these people entirely. But because it's, you know, it's about Ukraine and it's about Ukrainians, uh, let them do it. You know, and they tend to believe the accumulated propaganda that's been coming out from Russia. So, you know, and they tend to frame it in terms that confuse the, the, the basic Canadian. Like, you know, they say that she was uh, censored for her pro-Russian uh, you know, sentiments. Well, once she wasn't censored, she was continuing to, you know, uh, spew her venom on the, on the social media uh, even more so after than before. So she was not censored. And the other thing, it wasn't pro-Russian commentary, it was anti-Ukrainian commentary. And there's a very fine distinction. She was spewing what amounts to basically hate propaganda, you know, characterizing Ukrainians as, as murderers, genociders, you know, building concentration camps in Eastern Europe, that they're dog shit, that they're subhuman, that, that they're primitive. Like I say, if, if it had been some other performer, uh, and we have good examples of this. For instance, down in the States, uh, Paul Grodd made the, 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 the reference in his statement uh, that came out today that uh, Donald Sterling, the owner of the LA Clippers, made some derogatory remarks about blacks, which were mild by comparison to what the city was doing. And basically, he was stripped of his team. Like the NBA basically forced him to sell and kicked him out. Another example, you know, Paul, Paula Dean, she was a, a fairly well known yeah. chef on the Food Network. She made some derogatory remarks about blacks. Again, very mild in comparison to what Lysitsa said about Ukrainians. She was bounced from her show. You know, so it, it is a double standard. It's absolutely a double standard, and we should be taking the, you know, the media like the Globe Mail or the whoever that, that are, are kind of making light of this and are, are, are supporting her tacitly to task that they are they are absolutely engaging in a double standard. Most of the uh, people that write for the, uh, the Canadian media are, are not very well versed on the history uh, and the situation in Ukraine. Most of the academic literature, historical literature that, that people use as reference works is very pro-Russian or Russian biased. Most of the scholars uh, on Eastern Europe have always focused on Russia and have tended to look at the history of the area and the, the issues that come out of it from a Russian perspective. Very few understand Ukrainians and like I say, Ukraine has been subjected for almost a century to very, very biased, blatant, uh, hate-inspiring propaganda by the Russians against the Ukrainians. They've been doing it for 100 years and a lot of it is stuck, you know, that we're all anti-Semites, that we're Nazis, that we're this, that we're that. And it's all untrue and it's bullshit. There are, you know, some incidents you can point at, but they're always taken out of context. So the media is lazy. It doesn't do the proper research and it tends to believe, you know, what's coming out of the, the Russian media. And, you know, as we know, the Russian media and Putin, they're investing hundreds and millions of dollars. They are buying scholars, they are buying journalists in the West specifically to put out, you know, their perspective on things and to, you know, beat down and slag Ukrainians. And it's had an effect, and we can see that.